My name is Glenn Stearns. And uh, with hard work, I'm worth a load of money. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say that. that one but you just did. I did, didn't I? One year ago, I took on the hardest challenge of my life. I went undercover in Erie, Pennsylvania, a city I knew nothing about. I bet myself a million dollars that I could be stripped of my name, wealth, and contacts and be giving only a hundred dollars. My audacious goal to build a brand new business from scratch yeah. in just 90 days. If it's a penny short of a million, I'll put one million dollars into it. The people who help me get there will be rewarded, but they don't know it. I nearly died doing it. I feel like crap. I went from sleeping in a truck and selling used tires. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> to flipping a house and winning a huge local food competition. First place. <laughs> also that I could launch Underdog Barbecue. Hello, folks. Welcome to Underdog Barbecue. Proving that the American dream is still alive. Underdog! I've been to Erie seven times in the past year. The city and its people are in my blood. 25,000. I need a hug from you girls, man. Underdog! Now, on the one year anniversary of Underdog Barbecue, the story continues. You're gonna get run over by a freaking shark. Tonight, Glenn will get his first glimpse of Underdog Barbecue in months. Hi, ladies. What he finds there may surprise even him. You duped me. New insights from the underdog. Horrible deja vu. Never before seen moments from the show. Hi, everybody. I'm in a freaking piece of truck. And one major announcement that will leave them all speechless. I've been really looking forward to this. I have unfinished business to take care of. It's time underdog! to return to Erie. Hey. How you doing, man? I'm very, very grateful that I've got these relationships with people I, I probably never would have met before in my life, and yet they become some of my best friends now. How's the little one? He's good. He's uh, keeping me awake and filling diapers. Oh, there you go. Let me see your hands, see if you're really working. Dirty as hell, okay, I like it. There you go. <laughs> I was 30 years into my career, doing better than I could have ever imagined. You're off on some boat, sailing around the world in this cush environment. Why don't I take risks anymore? I don't want to live like that. I want to feel alive. I've wanted to do something like this for years, but not as Glenn Stearns, the billionaire. When you're rich, people treat you differently. All my buddies like Elway and Branson that said, are you crazy? Just remember we had this conversation. <laughs> exactly. Now they see, wow, that's what happens when you take a chance. Great things can come out of it. And my son comes up, hey, Dad, I want to learn to flip cars. Hey, I want to go and start flipping houses. They uh, got the bug and wanted to go out and become young entrepreneurs. This experience absolutely changed my life. I realized that I wanted to do it again. So I have started my own mortgage banking company again called Kind Lending with my wife, Mindy. I'm still working on the mixed tile project. Um, oh, Should, I'd love do you to want to show give us a that. list of people that were missing? I wanted to do it from the ground up one more time. And another great business that I am very excited about is called Anavive Life Science. It's made up of young people. And one of those people happens to be my son, Skyler. Anavive was working on a drug for COVID-related viruses. One of our medicines that treats coronavirus in cats may be effective in humans as well. That's in clinical trials right now. We're working with the FDA. It's, I mean, it's been going really well. Everything that we've heard has been positive. It's exciting to have all these new businesses in various stages, from startup to major expansion. And back in Erie, Underdog is facing its own critical moment. It's one year anniversary. Getting back to Erie, that's right. That's why I'm headed back now. I'm ready to take Underdog to the next level. It definitely feels a little different this time. Sure does look cold out there. A lot of snow. This might be my bed for the night. I came out to build a business. But when I first started, you go, holy crap, I've got a hundred bucks. Where am I gonna sleep? What am I gonna eat? 
And so it became more of a survival mission for me where I had to get my head right. That was a little surprising for me because I just didn't put enough effort into how hard that was going to be. Mr. Stearns. What happened? I broke my shoulder last night. It's always something. I was trying to take out the honey-do list, you know, and I ended up taking out my arm. Good to see you, man. My strategy for building Underdog's team was to find people from all walks of life, all experts in their own fields, entrepreneurs, tradesmen, organizers, creatives. I'm Glenn, how you doing? Chris, nice to meet hey, you. Yeah, real nice to meet you too. Chris Trott was a crucial part of the team. He owns and runs a metal fabrication shop. He built the smoker that won Rib Fest and became the symbol of Underdog Barbecue. Hey, so you want to go to Erie and check yeah, out everything? I'll tell perfect. you what. Why don't you drive? All right, I think I'll drive. All right. All right, perfect. I don't know where the hell I'm going. In one quarter of a mile, turn left. <laughs> so how you been? Good. Three months ago, during the height of the pandemic, Jen got induced, and we were able to bring our baby boy into the world. Oh, that's great. That gives you some motivation to, to get out there and get a successful business going. Since the show, how has it affected your business? Do you want honesty? Yeah. After the show, we just skyrocketed. Got to get out there and people know who I am and know that hopefully I do good work and I stand by what I say. This was definitely one for the books. Got great exposure, great experience. That's awesome. I think I need to get a little bit more comfortable with uh, you know, financial risk. I have a difficult time pricing what I do. But what about your family? What about now your son? Know your worth. Many people undervalue the service they provide. It's important to evaluate not only what it costs you, but the level of quality you provide them. I sent you that email by accident. All these people that were counting on me and I go and screw it all up. Chris and I had a pivotal moment. No, 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 no. no. After 11 weeks of being undercover, I screwed up big time. I sent Chris Trout an email, but I signed my name. I said my real name. Hello. Chris, thought maybe we'd sit down and chat, if you don't mind. I think that's a good idea, because I'm about to, uh five minutes away from just kind of walking away from this thing. We both worked really hard and everybody worked really hard and they have a lot to stand to lose. And I'm not gonna tell anybody. That moment changed everything for me. I realized how close I was to my cover being blown and losing everyone's trust. I didn't want them to think that I was playing them or that I thought that they were dumb. I hated lying to them, but I had to in order to keep the challenge authentic. That aided me the whole time that I was in Erie. Too many people that stood to benefit, you know, from the whole thing working. When I look back on how it turned out, I enjoyed having a confidant, you know, someone in my corner, because it's hard to keep a secret. And for that long. Oh my goodness. I just want you to know that whole phone conversation we had when you called me. Yes. I was butt naked. What? I had just gotten out of the shower when you <laughs> sent me that email, and I stood there, looked at my phone, and I was like, "You gotta be kidding me." <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. I got to finish this conversation. <laughs> so show me what's going on in here, man. The wall went from here all the way across. So we took down the wall and then moved the blue press brake. That's what you bent that piece of steel with. Yeah. And then the shear that you cut it with, I just got rid of that. And how do you move all this stuff? We have a forklift and it moves it just fine. You've gotten a lot more organized and taken on a lot more equipment. Perception is reality. When a customer walks into any store, it needs to be organized because it sends a message of quality. Last year, Chris's shop was a bit of a mess. I love the fact that he has reorganized his entire workspace. When you walk in there now, you're like, this is a guy that knows you And that feeling is gonna make people wanna spend more money to work with Chris. Glad you're doing well, the shop looks great. We'll see you in a little bit, okay? Sounds All good. Right. I'm back to check in on Underdog. I got food up. 
The ones running the day-to-day -day operations are Ashley and Cowboy Mike. Mike's the general manager, and Ashley oversees the kitchen. They think I'm here for the one-year anniversary. Yeah, exactly. Hi, ladies. Oh, hey, stranger. Hey. Really here to find out is how well they have pivoted through adversity. As much as I want to take underdog to the next level, I need to make sure that they can handle the big changes that will be required. So how's everybody been? Pretty good. Oh man, there's been a lot of changes. It was intense. Long days. Yeah. Underdog pivoted when the stay at home order came down. They beefed really, up really takeout really operations good. and opened up the front patio for outdoor dining. I mean, I can't even count how many times one of us would walk out on each other and we had lawn chairs set up and we'd be sleeping in the lawn chairs, uh, just out of it. I mean, I think we all kind of stepped up. Yeah, you did. And what you'll find is a lot of times when it, you're at your darkest and you think it's, you know, the worst it can be, you come out of it and you feel stronger. It, that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. And I think then you get, again, a bigger sense of pride and you guys come, become closer together. What I've seen here today is that the whole team can adapt, even in the hardest of circumstances. Underdog beat the odds, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Coming up. I have a major announcement for the team that's going to change everything about their lives. It's been one year since Underdog launched. Hello, folks. Welcome to Underdog Barbecue. I challenged myself to build a business in just 90 days without using my name or money. I wanted to prove that with hard work and opportunity, the American dream is still alive and well. Yes, Schember, how you doing? doing? Really good, good to see hey, you. Good Welcome to see back you. here. When I came to Erie last year, I went deep undercover. I mean, that meant lying to everyone about who I was, including Erie's mayor. It's been real rewarding for me, and, and that's also why I've come back so much. And when the cameras went away, I didn't, you know? I was nice. like, uh-oh, nice. I really got a real business here. Yeah. Now, we have the uh, Underdog Entrepreneurial Fund. We help the brand new entrepreneur with just the startup capital to uh -huh. maybe get his business permit or get incorporated uh -huh. or just the real small starting wow. money. People just need a tiny helping hand yes. and then they can go from there. Yes, we've got a lot of great people here in the area, a lot of great new businesses starting up. Uh, the businesses of the future, I think, are starting right now. I was really proud of what happened out of the show. You should be, absolutely. And it was not so much about building a restaurant, which was really nice, but it was about everyone coming together and helping. The common theme among RJ, Dawn, Chris, Chris, Matt, was that they were doing it because they wanted to help Erie. Absolutely. And I've fallen in love with the city. Thank you. The show had an incredibly positive impact here because the barbecue is, is still open. People still love to go there. When I drive by there, it's incredibly crowded, and it still is. Before we're done, I want to give you one of my pens. I, I'm a pen freak, I have to admit that. And it says, I'm committed to being open, honest, transparent, and accessible. And I always tell people I give this to them so they can hold me accountable to do that. And that's why I'm giving it to you also. Uh, so. You know what? Thank you for that. That's sure. so nice. It was great to see the mayor. He is someone that welcomed me right off the bat when I came here, and that makes me feel good. Matt. Hey. Good seeing you, man. Hey. How you doing? Good. When I left last year, I put Matt Sanders in charge of beer, which he's still looking for ways to expand. How's life? Oh, man, it's, it's been amazing. But in the meantime, it's... he got offered his yeah. dream job, a chance to lead and mentor a whole team of people. He's had to dial back his role at Underdog, but I can still call him anytime I need a sounding board. Zach, my boss, he, uh, he's a huge fan of the show, probably the biggest fan in all of Erie. So I, I did some consulting with him and, uh, and ended up uh, helping build some processes and all that stuff. Awesome, man, congratulations. I mean, let's face it, I mean, I saw the qualities that others have now seen in Matt. He's one of the most honest, organized, and trustworthy people I know. You were always one that I knew I could hand it to and I knew you'd get it done. I'm proud of that. And so, here we got you check for $20,000. I appreciate that, thank you. That uh, means a lot. It's just so nice, you know? <laughs> so we have all, they're all millennial or Gen Z employees, 35 of them. A lot of them, this is their first job. We've implemented a leadership program because some of our managers were kind of green. And so uh, that encompasses a reading list and TED That's Talks great. and all that kind of stuff. Play to your strengths. Determine what you're best at and capitalize on it. 
I brought Matt into the underdog team because he was so organized and great at logistics. You guys are gonna be the team leads. So, RJ, you're the one that's making all the decisions on barbecue. You know, Glenn and I are gonna be going out and talking to the brewers. I'm not as organized, so he helped keep me, as well as the other underdogs, on track. It's been fun to, to kind of interact with you and watch this transformation. Well, you said, you know, I want my kids to be proud of me. Right. And I want to prove that I can do it again. And so some of my transformation is, is part of doing that. Hey, hey no, I give you a hug. So All right, thanks. This is awesome. So I set up a meeting with Maggie Horn. She was one of the first people that I met in Erie. So I had to keep my little white lie going with her longer than anyone. Hi, Maggie. Hey, how are, how you? are you? Good. Hey, Ben. Oh, good to see you. So how's everything? As crazy as it usually oh, is, I bet, but... Huh? Some of um, the social media comments, they said, oh, Maggie must have been in on it. She knew all about it. And I was like, she didn't know anything. Nope, <laughs> nope. You duped me from the beginning. And I was just like, when you told me, and I was like, Okay, so you've been lying to me for three <laughs> months. Lying. You weren't. I had no idea who he really was, but to be able to see him again was awesome. Um, he just holds a piece of my world uh, very close to me. When I came in and I asked you for help, mm -hmm. and then I had wanted to be up and running very quickly. Uh huh. Did that cause any red flags for you, or did you just think I was crazy? Like no, I just thought you were crazy, other... like some other people. You're not yeah. the only crazy person we've ever dealt with. How are you? So nice to nice meet, to meet you. you. You were very determined. Ta-da! We're here. And you came in and said 90 days. I said, okay, guys, this is going to happen with or without us. I like collaborating with her. I like getting together and talking business. I really appreciate everything, Maggie, that you and the SBDC not only did for me, but for you know all entrepreneurs. So thank you so much. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. Thank you, Glenn. Appreciate it all. So I talk more with RJ than any of the other underdogs. I look at RJ more like my my son than any of these other guys. He's fascinating, actually, but he's also frustrating because he's got his own gear. RJ's overseeing the sauces and rubs line for Underdog. And he opened a brand new store for Iron Empire Clothing, his custom screen printing business. He's got a brand new location and a big wig investor who really believes in him, me. What's happening? Nothing much. Hey, good man. to see you. Hey, good to see you. RJ was my first friend in Erie. Hey. You RJ? Glenn. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. And he gave me my first job. Say hello to my little friend. So I like this. This is yeah. Nice. This is we. This has good been display. going really well. Gosh, but. it looks really good, RJ. Yeah, it's coming along. I mean, you've come so far. I mean, I'm real proud of you. you Thank know? you. It's a very good feeling to know that it wasn't just a, hey, I'm going to come do this and I want to do the show and disappear and I'm never going to be back. I mean, it shows that he truly does care about the businesses he's involved with here. You know, when we opened up in November, we were starting to see that incline up in sales, and then boom, the shutdown happened. And fortunately for myself and my employees and my company, having someone like Glenn in our corner uh, could be crucial for us to go through those growing pains. This is all a big job for the Anna Shelter. We do a lot of work with them. We do a lot of fundraiser events with them, but these are actually some really nice shirts. This is a big one for uh, St. Vincent, the hospital here. RJ's products have been selling really well in Erie but there's a bigger play. He could be selling his shirts and hats nationwide. I gotta get him to think bigger. People in our company will order shirts and hats and things in the past. They don't know where they're coming from. They just order online, the shipment comes. So we've gotta think much bigger than Erie and start doing some email blasts. You know, right now we're swimming with all the other fish and we're going, hey, everybody else is swimming at the same speed. It feels pretty good. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get run over by a freaking shark that's I gonna eat your ass, man. Yeah. You know, so you gotta start thinking like that. Swim like a shark. Sharks constantly move, even when they're sleeping. Any successful business needs to move and grow in order to survive and fight off the competition that's constantly coming after them, just like a shark. I'm proud of you. I mean, you've taken these bad times and turned it into great opportunity. Um, that's what being a business owner is all about. Now let's go get me a shirt. I need a shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we can do that.
How are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you. Good, you too. God, you look good. How a truck upgrade. I know. <laughs> Dawn's business has exploded. I pushed her beyond her comfort zone, something that really allowed her to expand in the last year. This was original to the building. This from desk? The, this whole desk. This is where they used to cut fabric because it used to be a dress shop. When Glenn first came to town, I was sort of struggling. Business has been better through hard work and pushing myself as well as exposure from the show, which has been wonderful. When I first bought this last year, it was kind of empty. You doing? Yeah, are you Glenn? I am, hi. Hi. I researched the top designers in the Erie area, and Dawn Van Scoder's name keeps coming up. So you want me to flip a house and design a restaurant at the same well, time? She went way above anything she'd ever done and was stretched far outside her comfort zone. I've asked you to do a lot, so I wrote you a check. Uh, it's for $25,000 for your hard work. I've never had this much money. I've, I've built it up and each spot is, is rented out. And I won uh, Best Antique Store 2019. Did you really? Yeah. I'm gonna probably have a space opening up here soon. The rent there is $120. I'm not sure you could afford it. You know, <laughs> the fact that you were pretty raw, you know, you know, Sorry. it really was. <laughs> Why? You know, you were being you. I was very angry with you. And, yeah. <laughs> it's too much for just me to do. What if this business never comes to fruition? Flip the house for, but have nothing to show for it. Walk away. What's the goal, do you think? I mean, obviously, you know, this breaking even is one thing, and then you've got 420, your design business, which gives you that ability to make more. 920. I mean, 920. 420 <laughs> is, uh, you know, I'm living in California again, okay? <laughs> the goal of every business owner is to replace yourself. When you start a business, you're doing everything because you don't have the money to pay other people. But eventually, if you're successfully expanding your business and generating a lot of revenue, you can bring in other skilled people to do the heavy lifting. Dawn is at that point. The store's doing really well. I come in on days that I'm not on job sites, and then I have vendors who work for me consistently. and. Usually it was my mom who had worked for me and done all my management stuff. And I met her in that back room when uh, we were filming. And you always had your mom watching your kids. My mom got really, really sick in the middle of all this. Oh, gosh. And uh, they found stage four cancer. We laughed a lot during the month. And she still drank her Natty Light and smoked her cigarettes. and. You know, she played cards with the kids and she and I just talked and, and I did the best I could to take care of her. Uh, so she passed May 31st. It's really I'm hard. Sorry about that. No, really am. Thank you. That's the hard one. It really is. I'm just really happy I didn't, you know, ugly cry. <laughs> You're a tough chick. I am. <laughs> a couple tears in your eye and walk back out there, you know. Coming up. I have a major announcement that will take Underdog beyond Erie and a secret that I haven't told anyone about. Surprise! It's the one year anniversary for Underdog Barbecue. The restaurant has weathered some serious storms in that time. All right. Welcome, everyone. Hey, thanks. Sure. I've invited Cowboy Mike, Ashley, and of course, Cleet to look back at some of my favorite moments from last year. And I've extended an invitation to one other person. I've been uh, really looking forward to this, you know. What have you been up to, Cleet? I have a new grandchild, the second one. So there you go. My days are filled with watching my granddaughter. She just turned one a week ago. Getting any smoking done? Oh, absolutely. You got them, you got to smoke them. That's right, that's right. <laughs> if you got them, if you Cowboy got them. Mike and Cleet, I mean, you all impressed us with your food, so why don't we take a look and, and see how that all started. What's up, sir? Good to that see you. Rough. Cleet, he's a very well-known guy in the area. I've known him for a long time personally. And I don't brag about too much, but my pulled pork is pretty darn good. Oh, yeah, I make love to it, man. <laughs> that's right. You know me. You know people. We'd love for you to become the front man of Underdog Barbecue at Ribfest. Woo! What do you think of the grill, man? 
Oh, he's fantastic. You can't be bringing sexy back because it never left. He's the show, you know? You gotta have a movie and a dinner and a show. He's the show. Clean is a full-time grandfather now. I was bummed to lose him as our front man, but he's always embodied everything that's great about Underdog. I mean, he's bold, he's fun. He lights up the room every time he walks in. Man, say I'm hungry. <laughs> you know, when we kind of look back on the show, you know, actually, we didn't have a great interview in the beginning. Yeah, I remember, I have like OCD and like, sometimes I get like real nervous, like the stress, do I love it? I mean, no, like I'm probably gonna die early of a heart attack or something, but do I handle it well? No, I don't, you know what I mean? Right, until I saw you in action, you know? I got my sister coming down, kitchen help. All dishes I want over here. Okay, get this wiped down, get that water off. Get all these down here, up here, yep. Let's, let's use this as a dish rack. I need a half slab, a sampler, and two platters for ribs down and brisket. Order up! Obviously, it's a year later and you're here rocking this place. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's a testament to who you are and, and, uh, and I'm really glad we got that second chance. I never expected my career to shift in that, this direction. So I feel like I've grown so much and I've learned a lot and just keep on going, you know? There's a saying in the restaurant business called being in the weeds. Yeah. And some people handle it better than others. Under stress, sometimes you handle it certain ways. You go into war, you go into action, right? You know, yeah. and so you helped. And, um, but then ultimately, kind of things came to a head with Christine and myself. And that was interesting. So you are pulling the pork. I put this on about 11 o'clock last night and mm. I pulled it just as I was walking out the door. There you go. Christine was our ace in the whole chef. Her brisket and ribs were some of the best I've ever had. She put together our entire menu. How good is that? It's amazing. I like feeding people because when you cook good food, people smile. The problem was her ability to work under pressure. As we saw at Ribfest, it was the biggest moment in the underdog's life and it went less than smoothly. The ribs are frozen solid. What does that leave us at? One. So we have one serving? I don't know. No more brisket. What time is it? It's 12 It's not even, how did that happen? Because everybody wants brisket today. I'm dumbfounded, quite, quite honestly. Like, how, how does that happen? I mean, it's frustrating. You know, we're, we're watching money walk away. Supposed to know I'm so, what inventory to All have. I'm saying is communicate. I told all four of them. Okay. All four of and, them. And then we got to keep going back and forth and find out do they do it because they're also busy, right? We're all busy. I know that's what I'm saying. All, all of us. Every single one of us. That's why I keep going back to you. Tell me. I am. You come back to me. Thankfully, Ashley came in and saved the day. But there's always been a little bit of unfinished business that I wanted to take care of. Surprise! And the surprise. <laughs> oh, how are you doing, Christine? I'm happy to be oh, here. I've been uh, really looking forward to this, you know? And just for the record, Glenn and I have been talking for a year. For a year. <laughs> hey, you get closer through conflict. You know what? <laughs> and then there was more to come. Let's take a look. Oh, man. We know it's coming. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! What's going on? I just need an opening date so I can get all the yeah, stuff that I'm I need, Glenn. Yeah, figure all that out. So a couple of things. One is, you know, I mean, Ribfest. The fact that we won is crazy. I couldn't be prouder. You know, I know you and I had a couple. That's you know, in the past. A couple. It, it's, it's in the past, that, Glenn. So. No, I know it is, but we have these differences. Like I see it differently. If you know? you're gonna fire me, just do it. No, I'm not. Look, I'm done. <laughs> Okay, but I still want to give you that because of the effort you put into this. Well, fine, but send it to me. No. Send me my equipment that I brought. But is that the first time you've watched that? Yeah, I, wow. I was there. Yeah, we're there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I didn't really need to watch it. And That's, you know, <laughs> if, when it comes down to it, if I could walk off again, I honestly would. Yep. Where I'm at now, I love it. I manage a barbecue restaurant in Warren County that is in the top eight of the barbecue restaurants in the state. Nice. And 
I love it. The place is awesome. It's phenomenal. Where you're at now with this restaurant, like they were, these two were meant to be here. I was meant to be where I'm at, where yeah. I'm at now managing. Well, I'm happy for you. I Thank really you. Am. Yeah. A door definitely closes, so another door opens. Only we don't realize that there's going to be another door that opens. I am a firm believer everything happens for a reason. But it's not always easy to go through. So, I mean, what did you learn from the overall experience itself? Um, when you take such a eclectic group of people who have never met each other right. and you have a dream and the right person to lead, you can do anything. You have a farm girl and I never in my wildest dreams thought that any of this would ever happen like 10 years ago. We, we did the best we could and we kept adapting. If you could go back and hire the same people again, would you? I wouldn't change a thing, not one thing. Oh. <laughs> not one thing, but the whole thing. Hey, love you. I love you too, Glenn. Hey. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Mike. We love each other. Coming up. I'm bringing in the core four, RJ, Dawn, Chris, and Matt, to look at clips from the show that never aired. <laughs> <laughs> including something I went through that no one knew about. It's the one year anniversary of Underdog Barbecue. I'm bringing in the core four to watch moments that never aired before. But this isn't just a look back. I have a big announcement about the company's future. But what's been, you know, your feedback from the show? I was asked a lot, how could you not know what was really going on? I have the best idea ever. I need to talk to Mr. Glenn. Do you have his number? <laughs> I think there was a lot of questions about how real reality TV is. Right. And, you know, I tell people, like, you know, obviously, it's real. I mean, look what happened to all of our lives, you know, especially through the process of it. So for me, it was as real as it can be. Lots and lots of people that are asking, you know, how do I find the SBDC near me? And, you know, how did, how did you get the, the loan and, and stuff like that? Really asking, how do I get started? Or where's the first place to look? Or, you know, things like that. The show was almost not made. See, what a lot of people don't know, because I didn't want anybody knowing, is before we started, I had an operation. And um, because of some cancer. It was the size of a dime on the epiglottis. They're hoping it's smaller. And um, that'd be an extra large catheter, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> when the show came out, I, I know I didn't, I don't think anybody else did either, know, knew that you went into the hospital to get checked out, you know, at the very, very beginning of that. I have to go to the hospital. I can't stop throwing up. This is the latest, greatest. It doesn't look like he can see anything on the x-ray, which is nice. And, you know, my blood pressure's back to normal. My fever is gone. So, you know, I hope I dodged a bullet. I didn't want to mention any of that on the show. I didn't want it to be a distraction. I wanted people to see that, you know, anybody could start a business or kind of reach for their dreams. And I didn't want the distraction to be money. And I didn't want it to be health. So it was brutal, you know? Especially all the time you put in during RibFest. You yeah. carried your own weight through the whole thing, no matter what you had going on. Hey, hi, Glenn. Hey. How are you doing? Glenn, you're a cleaning guy, right? I am. All right, cool. Yeah. Come on in, man. I haven't picked up a mop in probably 20 years, to be honest with you, but it's like riding a bike, OK? See, Mama always says, you got to start in the corner. I'm going to make Mama proud. When I grew up, nothing was handed to me, OK? I mean, my mom worked as a grocery checker, and my dad was a printer, OK? I paid for my college on my own, and I worked my way up. I did not want to give a hand out, right? I wanted to give a hand up. I wanted people to feel their own sense of pride in what they do. I know my friends, they got a lot out of watching the Cush life just go vroom, straight down to real life. And um, I didn't find it funny at all. This looks good. God bless you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good for fun. Thanks a lot, bud. How are you? Let's, let me, want a little more? Yes. I've given my camera crew a cover story since they need to follow me. Yes. They're doing a documentary on Glenn Bryant. Thank you very much. 
Is this all a documentary about? Going out and living the American dream, trying to make it on my own as a business owner. Mm -hmm. The real turning point for me was day three when I went to the soup kitchen. Those first three days were just humbling. I go in for a hot meal. Thank you, dear. And I come out really realizing that I've got my life so good and I don't know, I just don't know why we got it so good. So many of these people had some really rough patches in their lives. I stopped feeling sorry for myself and I realized that I had to create a new opportunity. One of the questions that were asked of me all the time is, you know, how did you get these guys all in, you know, really without paying them? I had no idea what was going on and I was kind of flying by the seat of my pants and on faith and gut instinct. I didn't know what was gonna happen, but I knew if I didn't help you, like nobody helped me, so I wanted to help you. To launch Underdog, I needed almost $50,000. And the only way to make that kind of fast cash was to flip a house. But I almost lost all my seed money and Dawn in the process. Holy I mean, this house is not anywhere near ready to be flipped. Okay. Um, I'm hoping to meet the deadline, but some of the team has been here to help, and but it's only been for a few hours at a time. I'm trying to squeeze in my jobs. I will make sure we have enough people here that we get it done, because right. we have to. I, okay. My friend said to me, every time she watched the show, she would know when I was frustrated because I would make this face. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what face are you talking about? And, and I learned what the face is. Oh, I saw that face a lot. Like, it's, I fix my jaw and I'm like, Oh, yeah, I, I, I can't about, even do yeah, it. I know their face. Yeah, the, yeah, the face. <laughs> and there was a lot of nights that it was just me and my daughter there alone, ripping things down. I sat in the bathtub and cried. I've got a flamethrower in the car. Right, <laughs> we, we should burn that. that thing down for the insurance money. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize even what I got myself into, and it's one of my business principles, right? Slow down and make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. And I didn't, I didn't have the time, and it was a nightmare. It was, but it was rewarding. Knowing that somebody bought it and lives there and loves it, I think that's the biggest thing for me. RJ, you came through a few times during those 90 days. You kind of took on this, like my rock star of the group, you know, where I always felt like you were there. The moment that I knew you were the real deal was when you literally sold the shirt off your back. We're selling some swag. Anyone want anything? Cheap stuff, necklaces? You, know, you guys drunk enough yet to buy some stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go find some people. This guy, RJ, is so dedicated. He's so focused that he literally sold the shirt off his back. I mean, can you believe that? Look at this. Started with 40 bucks. That's not bad. I'd say it's a pretty successful night. You know, and I went, man, this guy's willing to do anything, you know, and so. I just like taking my clothes off. That was, a, <laughs> that, that got me right then. I fell asleep in the smoker. You fell asleep in the smoker? <laughs> you know, I mean, you were, you were past exhaustion because, I mean, how many 4 a.m. nights did you? Constant. Yeah. You did an awesome job on that. I was bobbing while I was welding. So, like, there's good weld and then, <laughs> and then it was just like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I watch a lot of these shows, I think a lot of it's set up where here they come around the corner, you know, and all those kind of things, right? I mean, we're at Rib Fest and going, you know, what's going on? The panic that I felt at Rib Fest, we didn't have the smoker, that was as real as it gets. I haven't seen the freaking smoker yet. <laughs> like the smoker is a big deal. If it's not here, I can't make anything. When Chris Trot appeared around that corner. Oh my God, it does exist. <laughs> we were down to the wire. I mean, he really, truly saved the day. Oh, baby. <laughs> Is it nap time yet? <laughs> what do you think, Chris, was kind of your biggest shock of the whole show? At the end, when you, uh, when I knew everything and I thought I knew everything, and you pulled that flipping tube out. But wait, there's more. Yeah. <laughs> People didn't realize, you know, I was eating out of a feeding tube. We didn't have that on the show. We were almost finished shooting. I just told the underdogs about our valuation. Just find great people, and you try as hard as you can. You don't cut corners, and you never make excuses. So with that, I'm a little hungry, because this is how I eat. You guys might not have known that. So I won't make excuses. I'm a little hungry. 
It's home. Nobody knew it. And that's where I would go every day. So anyway, my point is, don't make excuses in life, because all it does is make failure. Nobody needs to make excuses. And none of you did, and we're all better off for it. How the hell do you drink beer? I can eat a little. Hmm. I gotta make a call. Yeah, I gotta go yeah. make a call. Again, I didn't want you guys to know that. Were you sitting there going, this is not making sense? Or we were at your apartment making the beer or something like that. And you know we've got these these microphones underneath our shirts, and I and every once in a while one of those those cables will kind of kink up, and I went to just brush it down, thinking that the cable would flatten out and be no big deal, and and you reflect so hard, and I went, oh, there's something else going on. Is this guy that we're following like it's like he's dealing with something else? And I I got really concerned. It's funny to watch how everything's put together, and there's only so much time, but there was so much more that could have been added to the show that. That people missed. Yes. Speaking about making beer, because you were the head of beer, uh, we got a little clip to show. I'll tell you, a business that's really taking off here in Erie is the craft beer business. My first idea in Erie was to open up a brewery. Serving a beer we created ourselves. We need to know what it takes to make beer. This beer could end up being the very first drop in a very large ocean of beer. You got it? Yep. We've got all the equipment. We went and got all the wheat and yeast, and now we've got real beer. And the next step is to bottle the beer. Just like that. Great job. Hey. Cheers. Hey, man, it's a hard work. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> it's like a cat in my mouth. <laughs> I, I don't think that um, cat is probably scalable. <laughs> there's, a, there's a little hole in the market. <laughs> this beer tastes like cat. <laughs> I'm glad Matt and I tried it out first before unleashing it on an unsuspecting public. It was pretty bad. I, I, I remember a little note of grapefruit, but no beer whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, building a business in 90 days, you know, can be difficult, but it also can be pretty fun, you know. I always say, if you're not growing, you're dying. That's true for Underdog, too. I have a plan to grow it, but I'll need the whole team on board. No one worked harder than Chris Trott. He almost didn't survive the final days leading up to Ribfest. There was a point there where I thought he might have gone off the rails. I closed the door and locked the other one, and I just... Whoosh, we sent Matt yeah, down yeah. to check on you, and yeah. was he gone, or what, what happened No, he then? wouldn't let anybody in. Other door. There was a little tiny hole on his garage door, and he found some electrical tape and put it over that so that a camera couldn't see through. I haven't gotten much sleep. <laughs> really worried about the functionality right now. Will it smoke? <sighs> that was rough. But, uh, it, was, it was horrible. To celebrate Underdog's one year anniversary, I've called in the whole gang. I have a major announcement that will take the Underdog story beyond Erie and a surprise that I haven't told anyone about. There was so much that didn't make the show. I remember, I think I cussed one time and you guys went, oh my God, he cusses. You had no <laughs> idea. But I want to show you a little bit of a blooper reel and we can uh, maybe touch on that real quick. truck is a piece of <laughs> Behind the scenes, I was facing my biggest nemesis of all, a 96 Chevrolet Silverado named Old Betsy. Every now and then, she tried to kick me out of the truck. <laughs> I don't want it to be singing. La, 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 la. I'm a loser, I'm a loser. Hi, everybody. I'm gonna frickin' piece of truck. Why don't you sell me a house? <laughs> you move the truck, I'm not. You like that for being a <laughs> We're out of gas. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I spent 90 days building up a cache of seed money. 
convincing people to work for me for free. I mean, it's finally really happening. So what do you think? I can see 16 people here bellying up to the bar, that's for sure. Although we're on a tight budget, Dawn has come through with some great ideas that really capture the underdog aesthetic and brand. It really did turn out exactly how I had it pictured in my head. It's time for the moment of truth. How much is it actually worth? What do you think the market is potential in terms of franchises? Yeah. I see this going from coast to coast. It's got so much potential, but we have a pretty small sample of actual operating results. Right. You know, just putting some kind of a multiple on the sales, the range on that's probably between half a million and a million, so if I kind of go in the middle there... $750,000. Yeah. yeah. Let's face it, I mean, this wasn't really just about building a business in Erie. I mean, it was really about building and rising Erie. What do you think Erie's been like, I mean, since the show is aired? Do you think it had a positive impact? Easily. I don't think there's been one time that I've come in, because I talk to you two every time I come in, that there wasn't someone here from out of town that made a trip here for this restaurant. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I have a big announcement about the company's future. For the last year, I've been working with Restaurant Insiders to evaluate whether Underdog is ready for expansion. The smartest people in the industry have been telling me that every city needs to have their very own Underdog. Local barbecue, a rotating selection of craft beers, a tailor-made experience unique to each community. This is my million dollar idea. How is everything over here? Thank you. Absolutely delicious. I'm proud of what we did, you know? I mean, but my goal for Underdog really is the franchise. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Underdog is going national. Cleveland, Buffalo, Baltimore, Philadelphia, the list goes on. Every one of the people who helped build Underdog will be on the ground floor of a multi-million dollar enterprise. I plan on sticking around through the summer and to put a lot of time into to Underdog. It's the best idea you've had in about 12 months. Yep. Best idea in about 12 months, that's right. The Underdog becoming a franchise, it's gonna be incredible to watch. It's gonna be incredible to be a part of, and I'm excited. Man, the sky is the limit. We're still, this is still just the beginning. So I can count on you guys to help? Horrible deja vu, but yes. <laughs> All right, are we in? Well, yeah. All right, we're in. hands in the middle, we're yeah. in. Yeah. All, right. All right, one, two, three, underdog. One, two, two, three, underdog. I didn't want to hit you, Chris. That's why I was like, I'm not reaching over. That'd have been great. <laughs> My experience in Erie changed me in ways I never expected. I got out of my own comfort zone. I hit rock bottom. I partnered with the hardest working people I know. Built something bigger than all of us. I came back to Erie to see how much has changed. What I didn't expect to find was how much there's still left to do here. Erie and I are not done with each other yet.